best CPU ever made gets a sequel. Dolly, now available for everybody, and I failed to cover Intel shenanigans appropriately yesterday. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast and Today's top story is a good one. This one gets me all ruffled in my jimmies. They're, they're piping hot, some would say. And it's because there's now evidence that out, at least in a Romanian retailer, which could bode well for the rest of the world, that there is a Ryzen 5 3600 AF being sold, which in case you don't know what that means, it's actually a pretty big deal because for a very long time, for well over a year, the best budget CPU that you could buy was the Ryzen 5 1600 AF for $85, because even though it said it was a Ryzen 5 1600, AMD changed everything under the hood so that it was actually a Ryzen 5 2600. So you were getting a better CPU at a discounted rate. It was a phenomenal deal for a very, very long time. And the Ryzen 5 3600 appears to be a similar situation. So this is being reported by a YouTuber over in Romania known as Ancient Gameplays. We'll leave a link to their video in the video description, but the Romanian retailer is shown selling this 3600 AF, which seems to indicate that this is a Ryzen 5 3600 that is actually on a Zen 3 process, which means it's actually a Ryzen 5 5600 for the American equivalent price of $126, which would be a very steep discount from the $200 that the 5600 launched for. So this could potentially be the start of a new generation of really budget chips. And this kind of, if this is real, makes me eat my words a little bit where I've been a little bit against AMD on not taking care of the mid and lower tier consumer because they're not releasing a lot of stuff inspiring in that region. The 3100 and 3300X were a paper launch. The 4100 came out way too late and underperformed the 12100 in nearly every single way. But if AMD delivers a Ryzen 5 3600 AF for roughly $100, that's going to be insane value. That's going to be so good for the average consumer who can get six cores, 12 threads on Ryzen 3, and then you, you bundle it with a B450 motherboard, some cheap DDR4 RAM. This could this could be the resurgence of really good mid-tier builds. I'm I'm like I'm giddy at this existing, if it's real, because as the Romanian YouTuber notes in their video, that this could potentially potentially be a typo by the company. However, the fact that they specifically put in AF, it's in a different tray box as opposed to the regular Ryzen 5 3600. That does bode well for it potentially being this, this chip that I'm so excited about, but it could also potentially just be something that's actually not as exciting. But let me know what you think of a Ryzen 5 3600 AF. Would you love it? Would you hate it? I'm okay eating my words that AMD doesn't care about the, the regular person if they sell that thing. I, I will 100% admit I'm wrong in that regard. Let me know what you think down below in those comments. Today's video is sponsored by Vessi. My friends, Vessi are my favorite pair of shoes ever. Since they first sponsored us back in 2020, I've only gotten Vessi's ever since. And that's because they are the ultimate everyday commuter shoe. You can go everywhere with them because they are 100% waterproof and weatherproof and they're knit sneakers, which means you can go in rain, snow, mud, slush, doesn't matter. Your feet are gonna stay dry and I cannot tell you how much this has saved me. Being a father, you have to be outside in the rain, mud sometimes trying to get your kids wrangled up. I don't have to worry about my socks getting wet ever. And because I've been such a big fan of Vessi, I've made sure that my feet are always in them and when they wanted to sponsor us this time, my wife was asking, hey, can I finally have a pair? And so we did, we got her the weekend and Chelsea sneakers, and she absolutely loves them, anticipating the Pittsburgh winter that we're gonna have up here, being able to traverse in the snow and make sure that her feet are gonna stay perfectly dry on the inside. And the best part is they're breathable because of their patented material that lets the sweat and heat escape, keeping your toes fresh. You wanna come show people your Vessi shoes? <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> And the Dynamax material is super stretchy, it's lightweight, and it's 100% vegan, and as well as giving you grip for all weather. And the manufacturing process of the Vessi shoes uses 99% of the knit material during production in comparison to the industry standard of only 97%, which reduces Vessi's carbon footprint and allows the company to save on energy and production waste. I seriously, absolutely love my Vessi shoes. If I wear these out after wearing them every day for the next few years, I'm going to be buying another pair. 
in case you want to check them out, you use our link in the video description, which is vessi.com forward slash UFD tech and enter code UFD tech upon checkout and you'll get $25 off of each pair of shoes. Again, that's vessi.com forward slash UFD tech and enter code UFD tech at checkout in order to get $25 off. Big thanks to Vessi for sponsoring today's video. NVIDIA wants you to know to think that, uh, hey, we hear your questions on power supplies for the RTX 40 series. So just like chill, bro, everything's going to be OK with them publishing minimum wattage requirements. This would be great to like, I don't know, have in one co-located place where we could actually see it. But no, we get it in a freaking forum post where it's just like ah, uh, regular power supplies will be able to power it. No problem. You just need a minimum power supply of 850 watts for the 4090, 750 watts for the 4080 16 gig and 700 watts for the 4070 12 gig. Additionally, talking about how there were previous issues with PCI Express 5.0 when it came to like uh, prototype connectors, but it's no longer an issue. Additionally, saying that the 30 cycle lifetime on the new Gen 5 connectors, which was reported as a problem, especially as we're seeing other AIB partners talk about it, that it's actually the same that it's always been for the last 20 years, I, which I have never thought about. I did not know if there was a cycle limitation on them. Nobody ever said anything to me, and it's kind of weird that it's only now being disclosed, but they're saying it's the same as it's always been. There's no vulnerabilities here. You just you stop complaining, friends, and I hear you're complaining that you want more crypto stonks, so I'm going to give it to you. Bitcoin up 3% right now. Numbers are higher. It's at 19,570 Ethereum up 2.56% to be at 1353 and Dogecoin is up 1% to be at 6. 6.1 cents. And Reese, are you up? Are you awake? You had a good load shedding day yesterday. Let me hear about it. Hey everyone, welcome back to UFT Deals. We bring the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Today is a speed run episode. I got to get this filmed and uploaded to Catlin in like 15 minutes before my power goes out. I won't keep you guys from it. We're jumping straight in with the Logitech G303 Shroud Edition wireless gaming mouse. It's currently going for $79.99, which is $50 off, 38% off, and the lowest price in 30 days. I've heard comfort varies based on your hand size, so keep that in mind. But one thing I wouldn't mind is the Gigabyte M27Q Pro, which is their 27 inch 165 Hertz 1440p monitor with a one millisecond greater gray response time and 98% DCI-P3 color space coverage. This monitor is currently going for only $269.99, which is 33% off. And don't forget, you can find these deals and more linked in the video description. I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hotness. And while Reese had a good load shedding day yesterday, I had a very bad stream day. Catlin, roll the clip of me killing my Starlink. What's he doing to the Starlink? I'm breaking it, as you can see. Okay. Oh, shoot. Um. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, we need that for the cannonball for the cure charity stream because I need a roof mount my Starlink so that we could raise funds to cure my son's rare disease. Uh, and I don't, there was like some weird gravity thing that happened. If you look in the clip, I'm like actually not pulling to break it open at the very moment that it does fall apart. And I can't, I, I just was not ready for it to open at that point. And it ripped the actual ethernet connector straight out of the PCB, ripped the traces out of the PCB and completely destroyed it. And so I'm very, very sad about these things, which the cannonball for the cure is us taking an electric vehicle, driving across the country, and Polestar 3 is gonna have a new electric vehicle for us. On October 12th, the Polestar 3 e electric SUV, it's getting unveiled, debuted, th then you could you could get, it's, an, it's, a, it's like a cool looking SUV that kind of looks like their sedans, but just a little bit bigger. And a little bit bigger is the amount of people who are gonna be using Dolly, because that is now officially available to everybody, allegedly. There's no more wait list, there's no more beta, in case you wanna try out the open AI Dolly, you can apply to actually use it, and there's, again, and no waitlist for that. So that is available in case you've been wanting to check it out, but you didn't get on the waitlist and you're going to have to wait on the waitlist for Skull and Bones a little bit longer. Ubisoft's answer to Sea of Thieves. When did Sea of Thieves come out? And now that, that's been around for like a while and that got delayed. And then Skull and Bones was supposed to come out roughly the same time. Anyways, it was supposed to come out again, November 8th. So just in about a month. Uh, and now it's delayed until March 9th. And this, this game's totally very actually really but definitely going to be coming out. And Amazon coming out and showing a really neat piece of hardware that I like, but I'm not going to buy because I don't have any use for it. But I, I like that this product exists, which is the Kindle Scribe. So this is a 10.2 inch 
e-reader that actually comes with a stylus so that you can write on it and take notes like it's an actual notebook, which just like, it makes so much sense. It is gonna be pricey starting at $339. Another reason why I'm not gonna look at it, it'll be from starting at 16 gigabytes of storage all the way up to 64 gigs and come with the basic pen or premium pen in case you want that, which just like after having an Amazon Kindle for over a decade now, I really like the device and to see them expanding the product line even now is really cool. And Intel is expanding their product line of the CPUs. We got more details rolling out about their 13th gen stuff, things that they were showing at their innovation event. But one of the things that the CEO Pat Gelsinger alluded to while he was on stage is the fact that a 13900KS would be coming that can boost to over six gigahertz. Well, we got a CPU Z benchmark of that already, which is just wild. Uh, it shows that it's 15% faster than the 7950X in this one specific benchmark, which we'll talk about in a second how Intel's been benchmarking things, but uh, take it with a grain of salt, but uh, it's already popping up in benchmarks. Neato, what's also popping up is a 34 core Raptor Lake wafer at Innovation. They just have it lounging on the floor. You can find that the, 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 the wafer's right there and it says 34 cores. This is not necessarily something exceptional that's gonna come to consumers. If anything, it would only ever come out to the enterprise market in something like a Xeon workstation chip, but it's, uh, it's kind of neat that the actual architecture can go up that high in core count, but it can also go down low on the GPU side because Intel outing the Arc A310 GPU, which is lower than the A380 and supposed to be a little itty bitty baby boy that's gonna be slightly faster than integrated, but is dedicated and it's gonna have a few GPU cores. It's uh, not many people are gonna want this, but it's gonna exist. And what does exist is Intel's competitor to the NVIDIA's DLSS as well as AMD's FSR, and it's now rolling out in more games, Intel's XESS being shown off in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. According to reports, it's actually pretty good and pretty comparable to DLSS, but it's also rolling out as of right now to Death Stranding's director cut in case you wanna try out the technology on that. And again, it's not Intel specific that you can use this upscaling technology. It's actually available for all modern GPUs in case you wanna try it out. But. What did get tried out was the consumer's patience with Intel when they had their launch of the 13th gen. And I just wanna talk about this for a second because uh, in yesterday's episode of Hot News, I kind of glanced over this, skipped over it because it wasn't my primary point that I was trying to drive home in yesterday's Hot News, which was that Intel's launch of 13th gen Raptor Lake, I don't care about the high end. Like it's just, I'm, most people aren't buying it. It's just a pissing contest between the two major powers. Like the 13900K versus the 7950X doesn't, like it interests me into seeing how far technology goes, but like trying to dilute the news to the people who actually are gonna be buying chips, I think the 13600 is a lot more appealing. And then thinking about something like a 13100, that makes a lot more sense. But the thing being found out with Intel's presentation yesterday is that there was a lot of shifty benchmarking going on. I did call out the fact that they decided not to put a bar in for the 5800X 3D. They just tried to make it a line above the 5950X, which was not a great move by them in the first place. But also if you look at the notes on how they did the benchmarking, they showed off that the Intel 13900K was running at an exceptional DDR5 speed. It had the premium RAM kitted in it. The 12900K was running at slower DDR5, and then the 5950X that they benchmarked it against was only running at DDR4 3200. Now, Intel's qualification here is the fact that they actually do this because that's the actual rated speed of the motherboard. That is like what this platform officially supports, and that anything above that is officially overclocking. So even though Ryzen 5000 runs way better on 3600 megahertz RAM, they're not gonna test that because that's not the official platform specification. However, it does show that they are stacking the deck heavily in their favor instead of, especially on a platform that still supports DDR4, not comparing apples to apples. It would have made better for the consumer had they actually tested all of them at DDR4 3200 because all of those platforms support that. But instead of doing that, they instead did it where the 13900K had the highest advantage to actually show off that it was better than everything else. And part of that could be due to the memory that's being put into the system. So it was something that Intel did that was shady. I heard you guys in the comments yesterday for me not calling Intel out on this. It's something that they definitely shouldn't be doing. And they obviously should have given more respect for the Ryzen 7 5800X3D in their benchmarking. I just find it funny though, that Intel did call it out 
in their stuff, but AMD in their comparison of 7000 series to 5000 series just ignored the 5800X 3D in their benchmarks. They just don't want people to think about it. And that got me rolling on a conspiracy theory that what if the reason we only got a 5800X 3D, okay, we we were supposed to, the initial chip AMD showed off was the 5900X 3D. What if they didn't launch that because they knew it would be too good and that's why they didn't give it to us because it was going to outshine the Ryzen 7000 series and would have made the 7950X look worse in gaming because a 5900X 3D with 12 cores, 24 threads, higher boost clock than the 5800X 3D would have absolutely slaughtered in video games. Potentially conspiracy theory, but Hopefully we'll be getting a 7000 X 3D refresh sometime soon. I would love to see it. And I think you guys would too. But anyways, that was my fault for not covering that as closely as I could have yesterday. Anyways, that's going to be hot news for today. We'll be back here tomorrow for Friday. It's tomorrow Friday. No, tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye.